Canyon's send a downhill bike needs little introduction, especially thanks to its World Cup win under the talented Troy Brosnan. In its current form, the Sender is one of the most sought after race bikes on the market. But companies get to the top by endlessly innovating, and Canyon has some eye catching ideas on how even the Sender could be improved. One of the key issues with many suspension designs is pedal kickback, which is when forces from the chain prevent the suspension from moving freely, especially on longer travel bikes. In a race situation, this reduction in performance could be the difference between winning and losing. Project Disconnect works by disconnecting the drivetrain at the rear hub, which allows the suspension to move unimpeded. We interviewed the project's creator to find out more and to learn about the crucial role that innovation plays in modern mountain biking. Basically, Disconnect is a system we developed to um, improve an already good suspension system to uh, isolate the effect of pedal kickback. But it's not just about to isolate the effect of pedal kickback because you can use it in several uh, situations. So it's uh, to use the positive effects of pedal kickback as well as getting rid of all the pedal kickback when you don't need it. Basically, the problem with uh, Disconnect is trying to solve is that there are uh, in suspension design, you have to always to take a compromise between several uh, influences for the, uh, for the chassis. And uh, Project Disconnect was uh, just picking out one of those influences and trying to isolate them from the rest of the system. And uh, I think I should start to explain what pedal kickback is because I don't think that most people out there uh, have a detailed clue about pedal kickback. Basically, in the most suspension systems for mountain bikes, the rear wheel uh, moves away when, it's, uh, when the suspension starts moving from the crankset. So there is a bigger distance between the cog wheels and uh, the chain is not flexible. So the chain has to grow a little bit and to grow the crank has to rotate backwards. And if you imagine having your body weight on the pedals, your body weight is working against the suspension. And some passages that could be good because if you go hard to a corner, the bike is more stable in the middle of its travel. If you go to, uh, to a compression, it can gain speed because your weight is uh, generating speed. And if you're approaching a really rough section, you want to, be, uh, to have your suspension to work as plush as possible and to absorb any, uh, any rock, any root, whatever you're going through. Because on the flatter sections you might need to paddle and you want to have a more stable bike and a little bit firmer bike for compressions and corners. And if you're approaching a really rough section, you just disengage your drivetrain and have a suspension which is working even better than it did before. Uh, actually, you get used to it pretty quick. Um, but right now we did not test it with uh, usual customers because uh, right now the system is a little bit dangerous if you're not 100% into it. Because if you forget to re-engage uh, re the drivetrain, you uh, start to paddle and that could, would not end up pretty well. The plan is if we someday maybe uh, put that into production uh, is to automize the system, but right now it's mainly may, uh, meant for, for pro racing and uh, for us in development to um, get a better understanding of the suspension and to be able to isolate some effects. It depends on how complex the solution for the, for the actual problem is. Sometimes it's pretty easy. You can do it just like this. And uh, for example, if you have an idea about a new bike, it takes, of course, a, a few more loops to be completed. A simple mountain bike takes like one and a half years to get into mass production and a more complex bike sometimes takes more than three years to get into mass production or even to get to the customer. So me as an engineer, I want to make everything into every detail perfect. But if we, if we would do that in every single detail, we would never finish a bike. And in most cases, there's an easy solution and there's a better solution. For example, uh, I think this is just a good example, like this uh, cable routing grommet. We could just drill a hole in the frame, put the cable through it, and that's it. Uh, we could ju just use, like, for example, a grommet made out of rubber, which you plug into the frame, and you can do it like this. This is a, a plastic cable guide, which you attach into the frame. 
put the cable into it and the cable closes the cable guide to attach it to the frame. I think most of customers won't even notice these details, but that's what makes a bike perfect. I think it's the most important part about our company. If you have a look on our bikes, all the forks are perfectly matched onto the frame. There's some uh, consistent lines, there's perfect color matching for all the parts. And uh, I think that, that is what makes our brand. Yeah, one of the uh, Canyon innovations I'm most proud of is one thing I use almost every day. It's the shapeshifter because it changed the whole way of enduro riding for me. So it is a, a system to adjust your, um, your whole bike from a trail bike, which you can easily use on uh, smoother and flatter trails and for the ascents. And it, with the push of a button, you can use the gas spring, which is inside the rocker arm to adjust the whole leverage of the, of the suspension, to adjust the head angle, to ad adjust your seating position, just within uh, a touch of a button. I think it's a still ongoing discussion for like the, the wheel sizes. There's a lot of rumors about 29 inch downhill bikes showing up. There's a lots of discussions for enduro bikes with whether if 29 inch or 650b is the right wheel size i think that will be a big point in the next few years still yeah i think it's something which came up a few years ago it's the dropper post because it changed the riding for so many people and at first they were looking like oh, what is this do i really need this i don't need to lower my seat post but nowadays if you take a look on a mountain bike, every mountain bike is using a dropper post.